I want to make him hurt. And so I want you to really go for the juggler. I want him to really hurt so that when I leave him, he's going to really be hurt. And so this Christian attorney said, well, I'll tell you what. The best thing to do is for the next month, just treat him with all kinds of expressions of love. When he comes home from work, just have his favorite meals prepared. And, uh, you know, just, uh, just show him all kinds of love and attention. And then, when you leave him at the end of the month, he'll really be hurt. <laughs> so, she tried it. She started fixing special meals and giving special attention and doing special things for him. And when the attorney saw her, he said, well, how are things going? I said, I'm ready now to write up the papers for you. And she said, oh no. She said, he's the most wonderful husband anyone could possibly desire. She was acting out the motions. She got the corresponding emotion. And the marriage was healed. But you see, you reverse things. Rather than acting angry, aloof, and so forth, you begin to act out the motions of love. You get the corresponding emotion. And that's basically what the Lord is saying do your first works over. Those first works, that is, the attending of the services, the reading of the word, the singing with enthusiasm. As you do these things, the emotions will return. The first love will return. The Lord went on to say, this you have. This is a positive. You hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which the Lord said, I also hate. Now, what was hated by the church of Ephesus became embraced in the church of Pergamos, as we will see a little later on. What are the deeds of the Nicolaitans? There are two basic views. One is that when you take the word Nicolaitan, it is made up of two Greek words, the Nicol or the uh, priesthood, over the laetans or the laity. And so the establishing of a priesthood over the laity, a spiritual kind of a hierarchy where we look at one man as, say, closer to God on a higher level, sort of ruling over or lording over the people in a spiritual sense the Nicolaitans, the rulership of, uh, over the laity. There was an early church father by the name of Nikolai. He was a Gnostic, and he taught that um, all of things that are material are evil. Only that which is spiritual is good. And because everything that is material is evil, it doesn't matter what you do physically, that doesn't count. And so he taught that uh, you could have fornication and things because they really don't count because they are in the physical realm and it is only the spiritual realm that counts. 
Uh, that is a, another uh, suggestion for the doctrine of the Nicolaitans from this fellow Nikolai, but I, I believe that it probably is a reference to establishing a rulership over the laity. The Lord says he hates it. And um, you see, Jesus died to give each of you access to the Father through him. And we all have equal access to God. A lot of times people say, well, you're a preacher, you know, pray for me because, oh, I know God hears you. Hey, he hears your prayers just as readily as he hears my prayers. And this idea that some people are closer to God or whatever is a fallacy. We are all equally close to him as David said, in him we live, we move, we have our being. We, we are just wrapped up in him. And so, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And to him that overcomes, I'll give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So, uh, again, uh, the special promise to the overcomers and the exhortation, those that have an ear to hear, let them hear. The overcomer will be able to eat of the tree of life. Now, it's interesting, in the first book of the Bible, the tree of life is mentioned. It was there in the Garden of Eden. And when Adam and Eve sinned and were driven out of the garden and the cherubim was set to guard the gate to keep them from returning into the garden, that they would eat of the tree of life and live forever in a sinful state. The tree that God forbade them to eat of in my own personal kind of belief and understanding, and I don't really press this as, you know, doctrine or whatever, but I believe that in that tree, in the fruit of that tree, there was a certain bacteria that caused the cells to begin to break down. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says, and that's so true. And I think that God, when he made these bodies, made them to last forever. It is sin that brought the breakdown and the mutations of the cells. Up until the age of 25, you have what they call the ant antibiotic forces where your body is building up, you're getting stronger, you're developing and, and you're, uh, you're just developing in those first 25 years. After the year 25, the catabolic forces set in. You start breaking down. <laughs> and it's a slow, long process. But it is the aging process and the cells begin to mutate and uh, the aging process takes over. But being created by God, you remember that the first Adam and Eve and, and those prior to the flood lived long periods of time living almost to be a thousand years old and no doubt healthy during those long years but gradually this poison or bacteria causing the breakdown of the cells the aging process and ultimately death I believe that the tree of life